in trouble and need help, we need to know where to look for our help. Today we'll talk about that as we worship together as the Sussex United Methodist Church. I'm Dan Gepford, the pastor of the Sussex United Methodist Church, and I'm glad you're here. Let's listen to our organist, Sharon Craig, as she plays our prelude. still not working very well on that video, I think, because it doesn't have enough power in the battery in the computer, because it works great when you have it plugged in. We appreciate all of Sharon's work and appreciate her efforts. I'm grateful that you're here. I'm glad you're here today, and I hope that you will come back every week. We're here at 11 o'clock. I hope you'll uh, leave a comment. If you're new to our worship services, let us know where you're listening from. If you like what you see and hear, I hope you'll hit like on the video and also on the page and follow the page so that uh, you can find out about upcoming events and projects in our church. I hope you'll subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can continue to hear more of our services but also more of the activities that we have going on to help support and serve our community. It's a good time to be together. And so I hope you'll join with me as we join together to worship God. Let's join in our opening hymn, which is God is Here. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna we're just gonna go ahead and sing without the without the music until we figure out that technical glitch. Will you join me in singing? God is here as we your people meet to offer praise and prayer. May we find in Here are symbols. 
Seek in worship to explore what it means in daily living to believe and to adore. Lord of all of church and and doubt keep us faithful to our gospel help us work your purpose out here in this day's dedication all we join me for a moment of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for every day. We know that each day from you is a gift, and so we give you thanks. We also praise you for all that you have done to bring us safe thus far. And we pray for all those who need you this week, for those who are sick and those who are struggling, those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for all those who are seeking to keep us safe, the frontline healthcare workers, those who are in our rescue squads, our fire departments and police, those who help in nursing homes and retirement facilities and assisted living care places, those who work in our grocery stores and our service industries, those who serve us from restaurants or gas stations or any other form of convenience and help. Lord, we lift up all those who are struggling, who have lost jobs, who are feeling lonely, who are worried about their businesses, we pray that you will keep us all in your care and keep us safe. And that we would come with you in, to you in confidence, knowing that you will care for us, that you do not abandon us, and that we are your children, praying the words you taught us to say in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'm going to try uh, another time to see if we can listen to a video. I hope this one will work. This is Sam Stillings and Nate Stillings singing Standing on the Promises. sorry. But we appreciate them loaning us that video, sending it to us, and sending their best wishes to us. I will post it separately so that you can listen to it. Uh, we'll put that on our Facebook page and uh, send our appreciation. We you listen now for a word from God as we read from the Holy Scriptures? Our reading is from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. 
The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. This is a word from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let's join in singing, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And we'll just sing this with our own voices. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Now let me talk to kids. When I was very young, we always had a babysitter whenever we had to leave home. We had somebody to take care of us and keep us safe when my parents were away, when they went out to dinner or went to a party or had to go to a meeting. They were with us and they always took care of us. But then as we got older, my mom came to us one time, to both me and my brother, and said, we want you to care for each other and care for the house. We're not saying one of you is in charge, you're both in charge, so that one of you won't boss the other one around. Your job isn't to boss the other one around. Your, boss is to t your job is to take care of each other and to take care of the house and make sure that it is all safe. I think that's the way our job is as the whole church. Whatever our age is, our job is to take care of each other, to take care of God's family, all the people, to take care of the world, to try to keep it safe, to try to keep people happy, to try to provide for their needs. When you see somebody who is in trouble or lonesome or sad, you can know that your job is to look after them and try to find a way to make them happy. Try to find a way to say something nice or be kind to them. And if you are around the house and your parents aren't there for some reason, you can take care of everybody else who's there. You can take care of the house and the pets. Make sure that they're safe everybody is okay. And we feel, sometimes we feel frustrated and stuck inside and we can't go out and play. We can't go and be with the people we want to be with or go to the movies or go to parks and do the things we want to do with everybody together. But we know that when people are sad, we can help them by being cheerful, by saying kind things, by singing songs and drawing pictures. That's why we've been making pictures for the workers in our hospitals. That's why we've been painting rocks with the pictures of the Cardinal and the Redbird to send to families who are sad. I hope you'll keep that up because that way we can show that we're in charge. We're left to care for our, each other and for God's family. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you help us care for each other. And we pray that you will take care of each of us. Keep us safe. Keep us confident. Know, let us know that you are with us always. Amen. Well, we've had some technical difficulties the last two weeks. When our kids used to put on shows in the evenings, they would sometimes interrupt them and say, we're having technical difficulties. And so we had to wait patiently as the audience. I appreciate your patience as we've gone through 
things not working the way we want them to. Last week, when the projector wasn't working properly, Susan and Patrick, our technical team here in the house, immediately took the computer and booted it up and got it restarted so that it was working all right. I know who to look to then. But last night, as I was doing the service, I didn't know who to call for help. I was by myself, and I had the slides out of order. I had the wrong slides on the computer in front of me so that I didn't know which songs I was supposed to be singing next. When I got that straightened out, I thought the music was out of order. Oh, I didn't know what to do. So I put on the video that we tried to play a minute ago from Nate and Sam. And that was working fine. So I picked up the phone that I was using to record the service and pointed it at the screen. That works great. But when I turned it around to put it back in position to face me, somehow I think my, my thumb got stuck on the button that started the filter effects on the phone. And this is what happened. <laughs> they imposed a picture of a hat and sunglasses on me. So that even as I turned and moved my head, the picture of the hat and the sunglasses were still there. And I could see that on the screen. I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to do to make it stop. I was pushing buttons as I was trying to read, and it was really embarrassing. Where was my help? Well, we figured that out eventually. But when we need help, we need to know where to turn. When I had mice in the parsonage a few years ago, and I couldn't seem to get that under control, I knew I had to call for an exterminator for help. When we have electrical problems in the house, we know we have to call an electrician. When the plumbing gets backed up, we know we have to call a plumber. When we are stuck or worried or frightened in our life, and we don't know where to turn, we know that our help is in God. That's what the ancient Israelites learned a long, long time ago. This psalm that we read, the first of the number of psalms that we'll be looking at over the coming weeks, is a poem that they wrote to recite to themselves or sing to themselves as they were going up to Jerusalem for the big festivals. As people traveled to the festivals in Jerusalem, the big holidays, the big religious gatherings that they had, they had to travel a long way from home, usually on foot. And the most common route to get to Jerusalem was crossing the River Jordan and going through Jericho, way down by the Dead Sea, and then up, up, up through the hills, through dry and rocky terrain at the side of a cliff. They had to climb and climb. It took many days, and it was dangerous. They might slip and fall off the cliff. They might trip over a rock. They might be attacked by, attacked by robbers or something. It was very scary. And so they sang this song about God being their help. If they look up into the hills, where is their help? Their help is in God. Now, I know a lot of people don't find that comforting. A lot of people don't know whether they can believe that. They may have had a really bad experience at some time in church. That sometimes somebody might have been mean to them, or intolerant, or judgmental, or unkind. And they think that that's the way all church people are. And it's our job to always, con to always try to be kind and forgiving and tolerant and generous so that we can show people that not all church people are like that. It's a shame when people scare people away by being unkind. Sometimes people are scared away from a distance. They haven't been in a church recently, but they've seen church leaders on television. They've seen people pounding tables and sounding mean and judgmental and difficult. People who have been claiming to speak for all of Christianity. And they are put off by that and scared of it. Sometimes people have identified the church with one political party or the other, or with one set of political ideas and causes or another. And I always think that's a mistake, not because we don't have political opinions and not because we don't want to have strong views on issues that we care about, but because we don't want to send the message to people that if you don't agree with us on which candidate to vote for or which party to support, 
God doesn't love you and God doesn't care about you. We don't want to write off half of the population ever, no matter what side we're on, because God loves us all and wants all of us to be family. And maybe you're just not convinced by the idea of God. You can't believe that, a, that there's a God who cares about you and that will be there to listen to you and think about you and hold you close and give your life meaning. You think that it doesn't make any sense. And I think that's very sad because it suggests that there just isn't any point. It suggests that we have to just go through life knowing that it is short and painful and difficult, and then that there's no real point to it. But if you're not sure, if you're thinking about whether there is a God to care about or something to believe in, I hope you'll come back. Come back and join us again. Listen to our discussions. Share in our songs and our prayers. Think about what we're talking about. Pick up a Bible and look at it. Don't read it like a novel, though. It's really a collection of different books and stories and, and, and accounts and poetry. There's all different kinds of things there. It's more like a library than a novel or a history book as such. It's got all history in it. It's got prayers in it. It's got poetry in it. It's got discussions and essays in it. There's all kinds of things in that book. If you're going to start, pick a psalm. That's the thing that is a good place to start, because these are poems that people have written to and about God. There are all kinds of poems in that. Songs of praise, songs of sadness, songs of complaint and annoyance and frustration, songs of remembrance. There are all kinds of things in there that you can find interesting. And if the first one you look at doesn't interest you, pick another one and read that one. They're usually in the middle of the Bible, so they're pretty easy to find. Poems look different in the Bible than everything else. It's a good place to start. And if you find that intriguing, you may want to then move to one of the Gospels, maybe the Gospel of Mark or Luke, as a way of seeing the story a bit more interesting. But I hope you'll come back. I hope you'll come and listen to our discussion and see what we talk about. See if we are cold and mean and judgmental and difficult, or whether we are kind and loving that's what we want to be. And I hope you'll continue to check us out and hope you'll join in the missions of the work we're doing to try to serve our community. That way you can check this out sort of risk-free and I think you'll learn that we can trust God. We can trust God in our difficult times and in our good times. We can know that wherever we look to the hills to see where our help comes from, our help comes from the Maker of Heaven never lets go of us, never gives up on us, and never forgets about us. A God who loves us now and always. Amen. I have a couple of quick announcements I want to highlight before I forget. First, we want to remember our moms. Uh, last week was Mother's Day, and we began a collection to honor our mothers. There's still time. You can honor our moms by sending uh, a gift to the church. Uh, we'll list our moms on a bulletin, and uh, we'll be together on that. Um, they, uh, we will also uh, list them on our, our um, uh, email or in our Facebook group. But this week particularly, we want to honor uh, June Rose Stuckey, Carolyn Elizabeth Bayer, Marilyn McCann, Susan Parsons, Arlene Cicchini, Holly Tiedemann, and all the SUMC moms. Uh, I hope you'll continue to send your gifts in uh, to honor our moms. What those gifts do is that we make this collection to send to support the United Methodist Communities, which is uh, our uh, denominational retirement home system uh, that involves nursing care facilities, also assisted living and independent living homes. Uh, the nearest one to us is Bristol Glen in Newton, but there are others all across the state and, in fact, all across the country. We support these homes through our special offerings to honor mothers and fathers. I hope you'll also uh, uh, remember that we have a special charge conference on Monday evening. We need to announce this to recommend our own member, Carolyn McCall.
colleagues in the District Committee on Ordained Ministry. Uh, we will also uh, vote to authorize receipt of a 3-3-P loan under the CARES Act if and when our application for that is accepted. So we'll watch the emails for that if you are on the Church Council. I also want you to know that the Upper Room devotional booklets that send out daily readings is available online for free uh, and uh, at upperroom.org. So please check that out if you are a reader of the Upper Room and you should get your copies at the Church. We are invited to be the Church in so many ways. I mentioned that we've been making cards and, and notes to send to healthcare workers. We send them to the Reverend Randy Parks, pictured here at the Newton Medical Center. Randy can receive these at uh, the Newton Medical Center in care of the Spiritual Care Department, 175 High Street, Newton, New Jersey, 07860. Uh, if you want to leave there, your cards or notes at the church, we'll collect them there also and send them to them. We're also starting a new project of uh, decorating rocks. We've been uh, painting rocks with the pictures of cardinals, also called redbirds, as a symbol of lost loved ones, a symbol of hope, a symbol of life. And uh, here's a sample that we had last week. I know there are a lot more that are online. Different churches have been gathering together to send these to the chaplains at the various Atlantic healthcare system hospitals. We'll send ours to the Newton Hospital, and I hope you'll help with that. Also, when you go to the grocery store, I hope you'll pick up, while you're shopping for your own food, a uh, gift card for uh, us to give to families in need throughout our community. We support the Sussex Help Center Food Bank in our own community, and people can go there to have bags of groceries put together for them. If you call the emergency number on the door, they will arrange for food for you. Many people can't get there or don't have transportation there, and we want to be able to serve them as well. So thank you for those who have collected those to date. And I hope you'll continue to support the church. Uh, our work is so important in the community now. Our community needs the church. They need us to be there not only as a source of food cards and cards and letters and kind words. They need us to support them spiritually. People call for help. People call feeling down and feeling depressed. People call needing a sense of confidence and community, and that is where the church comes in. We can be kind to all those we need. So many people you see out and about in stores are being rude and unkind to, to clerks and workers in the stores, not recognizing that they're just people trying to do their job. People are grumpy over social distancing rules. They feel outraged that they are shut up inside. But we need to remember at this time that we are setting an example for others. We are setting an example of care and concern and compassion. Everything is not all about us. Everything is about keeping people safe. As the bishop has said over and over again, our goal as each local church is to make sure that no one is infected or endangered by any activity of the United Methodist Church. That's because we are here as God's representatives in the world. We are here to do good and avoid evil, avoid hurting people, avoid making people unsafe. We will take efforts, even as the state opens up again, to be cautious and careful to make sure that nobody is in danger especially those who are most vulnerable. I appreciate your support in that. I appreciate your compassion for others in all these ways, and I hope you will continue to be there for others. If you'd like to make a gift, please send it to P.O. Box 244 in Sussex, New Jersey, 07461. You can also send gifts online to gnjumc.org slash online giving. Now let's join in singing our closing hymn, which is Spirit of the Living God. This is a familiar tune, but unfamiliar words to it. So just follow along. O Spirit of the Living God, the light and fire divine, descend upon thy church once more, and make it truly thine. Fill it with love and 
joy and power, with righteousness and peace, till Christ shall dwell in human hearts, and sin and sorrow cease. The wind of God with wisdom blow until our minds are free. From mists of error, clouds of doubt, which blind our eyes to Thee. Teach us to utter living words of truth which all may hear. The language all may understand when love speaks loud and clear. Let's go forth from this time and place then to love and serve the Lord, knowing that wherever we go, and whatever we do, and whatever happens to us, the love of God, the parent of us all, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with us and abide with us now and always. Thanks be to God who is our help. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good week. Come and join us again.